All right, everybody. Well, guess what? We are coming back early this year. Um, I wanted to make an official announcement video because the uh, the channel is going to undergo some changes here with the uh, next coming videos over the next couple of months as we get the 2019-2020 uh, Oscar race underway. Um, so uh, just wanted to, uh, before we get to that, though, there is a little bit of an interesting update here. Starting to get some different equipment here. Okay. Well, uh, so yeah, hopefully now the videos will sound a little better. Hopefully the sound quality is pretty good uh, and you guys can understand everything pretty well. I don't know if uh, that was a big complaint before or not, but uh, there's something, uh, some other stuff coming down the pike, and I wanted to try to get some professional equipment and uh, see how it uh, came through here. Okay, so uh, we're here today because the uh, Toronto International Film Festival announced their lineup, so we're going to go ahead and kind of look into the uh, the different films they've announced. Of course, at this early date, uh, we only have um, the titles right now. We don't know when they're all going to premiere, what night, you know, what's the opening film, what's the closing film, and so on and so forth. So uh, I've got the list here. I've got some, you know, the information on them that we're going to go through. Um, yeah, and we'll do the same here uh, because the Venice Film Festival should make their announcements here later this week. Actually, if I heard right, it's going to be this coming Thursday, July 25th. Okay, we do have a shortened schedule this year for the Oscars since they did push up the award ceremony to early February. So I figure, what the hell, let's get started early. Let's, uh, you know, get some coverage here before we get into the main coverage. That will uh, probably pick up once we get into August a little bit. Um, but yeah, for now, we're just going to look ahead at uh, TIFF schedule. We'll look ahead when we get the uh, Venice uh, uh, Film Festival schedule later this week. We'll take a look at that and kind of talk about what's at both and what shows up at one or the other and, and so on and so forth. Then, yeah, like I said, then we'll get into August and then uh, we'll get into like, okay, what films are out that I've seen or that, you know, uh, commonly look like might be some Oscar potentials, and then we'll get into the schedule of what's coming out in September, what's coming out in October, and, you know, we'll go through that that whole thing there. Okay, so uh, back to TIFF here. Uh, the first film that was announced, and I, they roughly put these in alphabetical order, so uh, we're just going to go with what they gave me on the website is what their version of alphabetical order is. The first one is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Okay, this one has uh, really been making the news lately. They just put out their trailer. I'll talk about that a little bit, too course is Tom Hanks, uh, Matthew Reese, and Chris Cooper starring in this, and of course it's uh, kind of a biopic about a journalist who goes to kind of do an expose on uh, Mr. Fred Rogers, uh, played and Rogers of course played by Tom Hanks, the journalist is Matthew Reese, and he goes in with kind of a um, approach that's very kind of um, sarcastic and a little bit uh, jaded, but uh, kind of comes out of it saying, yeah, he's just a really authentic guy, and then I guess the two in real life kind of became really good friends afterwards. So uh, this, of course, from director Mario Heller, who just uh, turned out a uh, film last year. You know, most everybody's seen it, of course. Can You Ever Forgive Me? Uh, and she got a lot of buzz about being nominated for director last year, even though I felt that was mainly just because she was a female director. And while I liked the movie fine, I mean, pretty well, of course, Melissa McCarthy and um, uh, Richard E. Grant were terrific together. They were the best part of the film. I don't necessarily saw that as a big, did not see it as a big directorial achievement in any way. So I, yeah, I wouldn't have personally voted for it there. But anyways, uh, the trailer was out, uh, came out yesterday, actually. And I'll tell you what, I wasn't wowed by it, surprisingly. Um, I've been really looking forward to this. Uh, the photos came out, I think I want to say November of last year or December when they were on set. And it was like, holy shit, look at Tom Hanks. It's like, it. I mean, it looked really good as far as the photos went. And obviously, I think he's going to just naturally become uh, Fred Rogers. He just, you know, you never bet against Tom Hanks when it comes to performances like this. So, um, yeah, but still, uh, it's, I don't know. The trailer was really sweet, really emotional, like, you know, like uh, almost overly sweet to where it was almost nauseating for me, uh, to, to be honest with you. Um Obviously, I think when the movie comes out, you know, it'll we'll see how it does. Um, I'm sure it'll make plenty of money at the box office. I think the the documentary that just came out, of course, last year, Won't You Be My Neighbor, which was famously omitted from the list last year of nominees for documentary feature. I saw that one late, and I, was, I wasn't I was wowed by it. I wasn't bowled over by it the way everybody else was. It was like a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I was like, eh, it was good. I mean, I, I didn't personally... I've seen years ago. I saw a couple of videos. Uh, they they sat down with Fred Rogers for like four hours. I didn't watch the whole uh, interview, but he gave a lot of you know information about uh, the show, how it began, and how he started, and about his personal life and stuff. 
So unfortunately, I kind of went into the documentary already knowing a lot. So there wasn't a ton that I wasn't familiar with or a ton that I suddenly got wowed by. Um, but anyways, uh, it looks like the film, though, is very much, at least from the trailer standpoint, very much going for the heartstrings, kind of, you know, you all know Fred Rogers, you all grew up with Fred Rogers here, we're just gonna make you cry because it's Fred Rogers, and it's, I don't know, I mean, I, I watched the show when I was a kid, too, you know, he passed away when I was in grade school, so I didn't see a ton of his shows, obviously, I think he retired and stopped the show when I was probably about five or six years old, somewhere in there, but I still, and, and it was on uh, reruns and stuff, too, so I did see shows after he passed away as well, when they were still running, um, so obviously, you know, I get I get that uh, emotional attachment and everything, and I did enjoy watching him as a kid. And obviously, as an adult, you come back and look at it now, and it's like, wow, look at all the kind of progressive attitudes he took back in the '60s and '70s and stuff. And it's like, you know, that's uh, you know, really a, a cool kind of celebration of it. And sure, sure, that that all goes without saying. But I don't know, the trailer just really didn't do it for me. Uh, it looked too overly emotional, too sappy. For my tastes, anyways. But it comes out uh, November 22nd, uh, coming from TriStar. And uh, we'll see how that one fares in the Oscar race. I'm sure a lot of people say, yep, it's probably in for Best Actor. Potentially in for Best Picture. Uh, maybe Maria Huller can get a director slot. Maybe. Um, other than that, I mean, obviously, since it is a kind of period piece set in the, I believe it's the 70s. Uh, well, you know, you have to go with costume design, production design, all the rest of those tech categories as well. Okay, we have an animated film also coming to TIFF, uh, Abominable. This is the latest from DreamWorks. Uh, Chloe Bennett, Ed, uh, Eddie Izzard, and uh, Sarah Paulson are lending their voices here. Um, it kind of just goes without saying, when you have an animated film coming out toward the end of the year, it's like always included as a possible entry to get in for Best Animated Film. And maybe if it has an original song, you know, you can put that in too. But uh, it comes out September 27th. Uh, I did see a preview for it um, way back when in the theater, and it just it just looks you know really kind of stereotypical generic animated film. But um, yeah, that's just me. Okay, the next one up uh, is uh, American Woman. This is uh, starring Hong Chow, Sarah Gadon or Gadon. I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Lola Kirk and Ellen Burstein, and it's kind of a uh, historical fiction esque story, kind of taken about uh, the Patty Hearst kidnapping and then how she kind of turned on uh, society and kind of the uh, Stockholm Syndrome and all that. So that sounds interesting. Uh, it premiered at Tribeca back in April, I want to say. Uh, it's 63% on Rotten Tomatoes, and there's no release date or big distributor behind this one as of yet. So we might, if it does well at TIFF, maybe we'll hear about that. Okay, the next one up, uh, another one that doesn't have a release date or a big distributor yet, and that's Bad Education. Also, no trailer on this from what I've seen so far, but it does look like something that could very well kind of pick up and and uh, and do well. And that's uh, the just looking at the cast and the story, and that's Hugh Jackman, Allison Janney, Ray Romano, and Alex Wolf. It's set in kind of the early aughts on a uh, in a Long Island school, and there's school larceny, and it's uh, uh, described as a dramedy. So we'll uh, we'll see how that one does. But that that sounds kind of curious. Next up, uh, Blackbird. This stars uh, Kate Winslet, Mia Wasikowska, Susan Sarandon, Sam Neill, Rain Wilson, and it's about uh, Sarandon's character, who's a mother, and she gets her family together one last time before an. It's either an apparent, it's either an assisted suicide, or she has uh, some kind of illness, uh, terminal illness, or something uh, to that degree. It is coming from Millennium Films, uh, but there's no release date on the film as of yet. Okay, next up we have. Uh, Clemency. This is starring Alfred Woodard, and this uh, was a Sundance film. I believe it won the uh, one of a big prize at Sundance. It's 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, just from about seven or eight reviews. Uh, and it's kind of a character study on a woman who's a warden on death row. Uh, it is set for release December 27th, and it's coming from Neon Productions. So uh, obviously they've had uh, history in the past with like um, uh, I Tanya and a few other films there. So we'll see how that one does. Okay, this <laughs> next one kind of sounds curious. Uh, it's called uh, Dolmite is My Name. Uh, it stars Eddie Murphy, Wesley Snipes, Mike Epps, Craig Robinson, uh, Titus Burgess, Keegan-Michael Key, T.I. Harris, and Chris Rock. Uh, it comes from director Craig Brewer, who did Hustle and Flow back in the day, written by Scott Alexander and Larry... Uh, I always mess up his name. Karazowski, I believe. Something like that. That's how you pronounce it. And it's a biopic of uh, actor and comedian Rudy Ray Moore, who is a black exploitation star of the 1970s. Uh, it's an it's a Netflix film, but they have not released a uh, potential release date for it yet. 
Uh, it sounds interesting. Obviously, Eddie Murphy, you know, uh, got nominated for Dreamgirls and almost won Supporting Actor back in the day. Uh, arguably lost because of uh, Norbit, but uh, yeah, we'll see here. Uh, he also recently, uh, it's rumored at least, or he's approaching a deal with Netflix to do some uh, stand-up, uh, or at least a, a stand-up special. So that'd be, I mean, obviously Eddie's been, you know, in and out of the, the news here in the last few years, just kind of, oh, he's making a film, oh, okay. yeah, and it's just kind of all over the place. So um, it'd be interesting to see this one, uh, see if one comes together for him and see if he can kind of get uh, his second or third comeback uh, going, uh, arguably second or third comeback, depending on how you view that stuff. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, a film called Endings, Beginnings. I uh, don't know too much about this one. It stars uh, Shailene Woodley, Jamie Dornan, and Sebastian Stan. comes from director Drake Doremus, uh, who directed Like Crazy. I haven't seen that one. It's kind of just a basic uh, rom-com style film about just a love triangle between these three characters. Um, no big release date or big known distributor yet. Um, yeah, we'll just see if that one uh, makes it. Okay, uh, next one is one I have heard of, and I have seen the trailer for it, and it, it's probably one of my more anticipated films, actually, the rest of the year, and that's Ford v. Ferrari. Uh, you got Christian Bale, you got Matt Damon, John Bernthal, Tracy Letts, Katerina Balf, Balfe, I think is how you pronounce it. I, I don't watch Outlander, so I don't know. And Noah Juppé, or Jupe, or, yeah, yeah, we'll find out more about him later. He's got another one uh, coming up later on down the list. Um, and he was the little boy from, uh, Quiet Place. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to him later. He's in another one. And of course it's from director James Mangold, uh, who did Walk the Line, Logan, uh, a few other films there. And it's a biopic about, uh, Carol Shelby, who's played by Matt Damon and Ken Miles, who's Christian Bale as they, you know, compete in, uh, big European race. I can't remember the name of it now, but anyways, trailer came out for this. I want to say it was a couple months. It was a month ago or a month and a half ago. The trailer looked awesome, I have to say. Um, I wasn't as hot on Logan as a lot of other people were, and, and Walk the Line is one. I need to rewatch it. I watched it when it came out, and I don't remember a ton of it. But, um, yeah, but, you know, sounds like they've got a pretty, you know, it's obviously a good director on board. Interesting story. Uh, coming out November 15th from 20th Century Fox, a uh, division of Walt Disney. Okay, uh, the next one up is Frankie. This stars Isabel Huppert. Marissa Tomei, Brendan Gleeson, and Greg Kinnear. Uh, it's from director Ira Sox, who uh, made Love is Strange. It came out a few years ago. I didn't see it, but looked interesting. Uh, this uh, premiered at Cannes a few months ago and uh, holds a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's basically a dramedy about an actor who's played by Huppert who reunites with her family on holiday. Evidently, something goes down on holiday. Uh, it's set for release on October 25th and is coming from Sony Pictures Classics. Okay, uh, the next one sounds interesting to me. It's called Greed. It stars uh, Steve Coogan, Isla Fisher, Sophie Cookson, and a Asia Butterfield and Stephen Fry. And it's about a wealthy man who celebrates his 60th birthday on a Greek island. And that's Coogan. Uh, I guess it's, yeah, kind of like a parable or kind of story like that. Uh, it's coming from uh, Sony Pictures and Film 4. Uh, they don't have a release date on it yet. but uh, And no trailer that I've seen as of yet. But uh, that looks kind of cool. Okay, here's one that sounds very curious to me. It's called Guest of Honor. It's going to star David Thewlis and Luke Wilson. It's from writer-director Adam McGoyan, famous for uh, getting nominated a couple nominations for The Sweet Hereafter back in the 90s. And it basically just sounds like a nice story. It's just a man and his daughter kind of sit down and kind of go through their past and try to make amends. Kind of sounds like, you know, a modern-day version of uh, Dinner with Andre or something like that. And uh, no release date or big known distributor as of this time, but, you know, Thulis is an actor I, yeah, I love when he's in a lot of stuff. Um, love him in, like, the Harry Potter movies, stuff like that, and, you know, Agoyan has been kind of on and off the map for uh, the past couple decades here, so it'd be fun to see him get back in the Oscar race here. Okay, next up is Harriet, uh, of course, biopic about uh, uh, Harriet Tubman, and they just brought out a trailer today. Uh, stars Cynthia Erivo as Harriet Tubman, Leslie Autumn Jr. is in it, as well as Joe Alwyn and Janelle Monae. Uh, interesting that uh, the director on this is Cassie Lemons, uh, or Le Lemons or Lemmings, I can't remember. I might have typoed that. We'll, um, I'm sure we'll hear about this film later, I'll get it right later. <laughs> uh, but she's known, of course, for her acting career, including roles in the 90s, big roles in the 90s, like in Silence of the Lambs, and uh, Candyman. And uh, interesting enough, the reason I pointed this out, because I saw in the trailer... 
the cinematography, there's no way this doesn't get nominated for Best Cinematography. It looks so gorgeous. And it's com- coming from uh, two-time Academy Award winner John Toll, who's also nominated. Uh, let's see, he won for Legends of the Fall and Braveheart in back-to-back years. Uh, of course, Emmanuel Lubezki repeated that and one-upped him <laughs> three years in a row between Gravity, Birdman, and uh, The Revenant. But um, he was also nominated for another film, but I can't remember. It was the last time he was nominated. It was a few years ago. Shoot, I looked it up beforehand. Now I've forgotten it. Okay. But anyways, uh, the trailer was out. And the trailer, yeah, like I said, the trailer looks gorgeous. It looks like it's actually going to be a little bit more of like a Toten Guns kind of movie, a little bit more action-driven, perhaps, than your standard biopic, uh, which, you know, sometimes that works. Um, and, yeah, so I think, obviously, it's a, a very... Uh, in in uh, very en- entrancing subject matter, something that, you know, I think a Harriet Tubman movie, you know, is something that could be done at any time, really. It's a big, you know, uh, commodity out there, something that uh, really could make for some great storytelling. And uh, looks like they did a good job on the film. It comes out November 1st, and it'll be uh, courtesy of Focus Features. Okay, next up is Honey Boy. Stars uh, Lucas Hedges, Noah Juppé, or Jupe. Uh, we'll find out his pronunciation of his name later. Shia LaBeouf and Michael Monroe. Uh, written by Shia LaBeouf, uh, based around his upbringing. Uh, he plays his own father in the film, and uh, Jupe, or Juppé plays, his, plays Shia LaBeouf as a young child. Um, and it was a big kind of knock-your-socks-off film at Sundance this year. It's 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. Most of the reviews were very favorable. Um, yeah, so I, I was really, I mean, Shia LaBeouf, uh, of course, you know, is, is a, a wild card when it comes to Hollywood stuff. Uh, of course, you know, famous for roles like Holes and on Even Stevens back in the day, and then, of course, got his big break on the big screen with Transformers, and then after that he kind of really got caught up in his own fame and stuff and wearing the paper bag over his head and, and plagiarizing on art materials and stuff. But then he comes back and is really great in Fury, the supporting role he had in Fury is Bible. And, um, yeah, he was amazing in that. And it's like, oh, do, he reminds you, hey, he, he can still act. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if this is more uh, if this is more like his role uh, in Fury, where he's just really all in on the performance, or if he's really just kind of, you know, uh, kind of, well, for lack of a better phrase, pleasuring himself with his own story on screen. But so far, you know, when critics are 100%, usually that means it's it's the former or between the two. Uh, possible outcomes there. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how this one goes down. Uh, it's set for release on November 8th uh, through Amazon. Okay, here's an, uh, another one. I don't know a ton about this one, but it did sound interesting just from the little description and the cast, and it's uh, called Hope Gap. Uh, stars Annette Benning and Bill Nye as a married couple who decide to split up, and um, you know they've been, I guess, married for a good number of years. Uh, no release date on it, but it's from Roadside Attractions. Um, every now and again, yeah, we'll see films like this nominated, especially for the performances. This uh, kind of sounds a little bit like The Wife with uh, Glenn Close last year, which I have to say, really quick, I, I remember I reviewed the film. I was kind of wishy-washy on it. I've seen it again. I loved it the second time. The second time, it was so much better. I don't know if it was just me. And then I kind of showed it to uh, some family members, and they, they loved it from the first watch. But... Um, yeah, so that's one uh, kind of reminds me of that. And there's a couple other films kind of like that uh, coming up at uh, TIFF this year. Okay, uh, the next one up is How to Build a Girl. This stars uh, Beanie Feldstein, Chris O'Dowd, Emma Thompson, and Alfie Allen from Game of Thrones. And, okay, I know I'm late to the party, but I just started Game of Thrones a few weeks ago. I'm almost done with season one. And I, yeah, it's it's amazing. What can I say? It's great. So, um <laughs> Uh, Alfie Allen actually pops up in a couple films this year, and he actually just got Emmy nominated too. So I, I'm not a big fan of his character yet, but maybe that'll turn around. Um, okay, so this is a, kind of a coming of age story, kind of a semi autobiographical. Like one of the writers on the film, uh, kind of I guess wrote a piece about this and you know lived it, and now is co-writing the film. Uh, it's about a working teenage girl who wants to become a London music critic, which sounds fascinating. Uh, now, Beanie Feldstein also was in a film this year. Well, she uh, I first saw her in um, uh, Lady Bird a couple years ago, and I thought she was she was a pretty funny supporting character in that. And she was very good in Booksmart, uh, a, a film uh, came out earlier this summer. Again, I wasn't as wowed by it as, as a lot of other people were, but I still laughed my ass off at a lot of other parts. So I, I did enjoy the film. Uh, not Again, not as much as everybody else, but it, she was really good in it. Uh, Caitlin Dever was great. 
I, I'll, I'll get to, you know, in a different video, I'll, I'll go more in depth on a lot of other films I've seen this year that I've really liked. But I, I mean, it's right now I'm thinking about it. It's like it'd be a crime to see somebody like uh, what's her? Oh, shoot. I've already forgotten her name already. Carrie Fisher's daughter. Um, oh, I'll, I'll remember it later. She was terrific in the film, too. Yeah. But anyways, um, and this uh, does not have a release date. How to Build a Girl does not have a release date yet, but it's coming from Lionsgate. OK, the next one up, I don't I mean, doesn't look like it's going to be an Oscar contender, but I threw it on here anyways because it's kind of a bigger film. Hustlers, and it just came out with the preview, I think, last week. Didn't see it, but uh, it stars Constance, Constance Wu, Jennifer Lopez, Cardi B, uh, Julia Stiles, Kiki Palmer, Lily Reinhardt, Mercedes Rule, Usher, and Max Minghella, or Minghella, excuse me. Uh, part of the reason I put it on the list here was just because uh, it's, it's coming from Adam McKay and Will Ferrell uh, through their uh, Gary Sanchez, I guess, uh, production house. And it's about a group of strippers who are planning revenge on some Wall Street kind of big ego, big money clients. Uh, it comes out from STX on September 13th. Um, yeah, I just, you know, we we see a couple films like this every now and again pop up at TIFF. And they just kind of do a big premiere before they release. And it's like most of the time they don't turn out very well. But um, yeah, I, I threw that on there just, you know, uh, just in case. Okay, the next one up is one, uh, actually the next two films coming up here are probably two of the more hotly anticipated films amongst uh, a lot of big film fans. Uh, and that's big film fans for independent fare and also for just big general audience. First one is Jojo Rabbit. Of course, this comes from uh, Taika Waititi, who also stars in the film, alongside Sam Rockwell, Scarlett Johansson, Rebel Wilson, Thomas and McKenzie, Stephen Merchant, and Alfie Allen. Uh, Taika also wrote the script, and it's about a little boy. It's based on a, a book, but it's... Um, about a little boy who is fighting fascism with the help of his imaginary friend Adolf Hitler. The trailer just came out for this today, and I've the trailer looks so much like a. Uh, it's it's definitely Taika's style as a director, but it's very much in, in like a. Uh, it almost feels like the script could have come from Wes Anderson, um, which I think that that sounds like an ex excellent uh, combination to me. So this is one really looks like, I mean, I could totally see Taika going for a uh, a nomination at the Globes for lead actor in a comedy uh, film. Uh, that, yeah, that sounds like that could very much happen, because he, he looks like he's going to be very funny in the film. Um, yeah, we'll see if it can go anywhere past that, but, uh, but anyways, um, it comes out October 18th from uh, Fox Searchlight. Okay, and next up uh, is Joker. Uh, stars, uh, of course, Joaquin Phoenix, Robert De Niro, Zazie Beetz, Mark Maron, Shea, Winning Shea Wingham, excuse me, and Brian Tyree Henry, of course, coming from director Todd Phillips, most known for his comedies. Of course, that's uh, The Hangover and War Dogs and a few other films there. Okay, I'm going to make the, the joke now so we can all get over it. This is the wild card. This is a, a Joker is going to be a real wild card this year in the Oscar race. Yeah, I'm, everybody else is going to tell that joke, so let me beat him to the punch here. Um... Uh, of course, yeah, Todd Phillips, like I said, is known for his comedies, but, you know, most of the time they do pretty well. So, you know, like uh, The Hangover, of course, the big box office hit, had two sequels, and also one at the Golden Globes for Best uh, Motion Picture Comedy Musical. And uh, War Dogs got uh, Jonah Hill nominated for Best Actor Comedy Musical a few years ago. And I remember I saw that one in the theater. I, I was, you know, pretty entertained by it. I know critics were really hateful on that film. I, I had a fun time with it. And... Um, Yes, yeah, so obviously the Joker trailer came out a few months ago. It looks, I mean, very, very good, I think. Uh, Joaquin is almost a, a, a guarantee at this point to it, to be in the conversation for Best Actor, potentially get nominated for it. Um, yeah, so, you know, and obviously when I say wild card, I definitely mean wild card here because this is really not the typical film you'll see in a, a lineup in TIFF. Uh, it's also rumored to show up at Venice. We'll find out for sure. Uh, later on this uh, later on this week, and uh, yeah, I mean, just I mean the darkness of it, but it also looks comedic. So I don't know what they're going to do with it at the Globes. Of course, it's coming from Warner Brothers, who last year I thought made a very fatal mistake by putting Star Is Born in the drama category, and uh, you know, obviously Bohemian Rhapsody I thought made the same mistake, but Bohemian Bo Rap won uh, for Best Picture Drama, so. Uh, who knows? Um, so I don't know. They'll probably, I mean, just from the looks of the trailer and stuff, they'll probably put it in the drama race. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's really weird. But, you know, traditionally at the Oscars, 
all of the Batman films that have featured the Joker have done pretty well. I mean, the original Batman from 89, you know, even though it didn't, you know, get a ton of nominations, it won for its production design. That was its only nomination, actually. Um, but of course, you know, I always say the acid test at a lot of films like that is if you have to name one nomination that a film is going to get, it's like production design was probably number one for the original Batman, uh, that or makeup or something. But, uh, yeah. And then of course the dark Knight with, uh, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan's film with the Joker, eight nominations, including a win for, uh, um, the late, uh, Heath Ledger there. And, uh, even <laughs> freaking suicide squad had the Joker in it and that one for makeup. So you know what? The Academy really likes your Batman and, and DC films if the Joker's in them, so I would say this one has a good shot. Uh, it comes out October 4th, uh, of course, as we mentioned, from Warner Brothers. All right, next one up is Judy. Of course, the uh, Judy Garland biopic uh, stars Renee Zellweger, Michael Gambon, and Finn Wittrock. Uh comes out September 27th from Roadside Attractions. There is a trailer out for this one. I didn't quite see it yet. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we could easily see Renee Zellweger really on a big comeback here and get her first nomination in, what would it be, over 15 years, I believe. Uh, I don't think she was nominated since her win for Cold Mountain, I don't think. But, yeah. Okay, uh, next up, uh, this one sounds pretty interesting. It's uh, Just Mercy, and it was added uh, very recently to the kind of release date calendar this year. It stars Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx, Brie Larson, O'Shea Jackson Jr., uh, Tim Blake Nelson, and Rafe Spall. Coming from director Destin Daniel Creighton, uh, known for Short Term Short Term Twelve, excuse me, and The Glass Castle. Uh, I, I never did see Short Term Twelve, and I I wasn't a fan of Glass Castle. But uh, the film's about an innocent man uh, on death row, or supposedly innocent, played by Jamie Foxx, and a lawyer is fighting for him in court. And of course, the lawyer is uh, Michael B. Jordan. Uh, so yeah, we don't have a big uh, trailer for this one yet. I imagine we'll probably get it in the coming months. But you know, sounds pretty good. Comes out on Christmas Day, uh, courtesy of Warner Brothers. So we'll see how that one turns out. Okay, the next one we do have a trailer for, and it's another kind of bigger release, uh, and that's Knives Out, uh, starring uh, probably one of the biggest ensemble casts of the year, and that's Daniel Craig, Tony Collette, Jamie Lee Curtis, Anna de Armas, Chris Evans, Don Johnson, Michael Shannon, Lakeith Stanfield, Catherine Langford, Frank Oz, M. Emmett Walsh, and Christopher Plummer. Whew, okay, who's not in the film? Uh, it comes from writer-director Ryan Johnson, famous or infamous, you know, depending on your view of uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi, and Looper, amongst a few other films. And it's basically a, a, a whodunit movie, and the trailer was, it was fun while while I was watching it, but it didn't, it didn't really stick with me. I didn't, you know, there wasn't a ton of stuff that, you know, stuck out in my mind. I'm like, I'm really, really looking forward to that. So it, the trailer was all right, but I, yeah, we'll see how this one goes. Comes out November 27th from Lionsgate. Um, I do have to say, though, again, I really do like that Daniel Craig is taking more of these uh, comedic roles because he was very good in uh, one of Soderbergh's last films, uh, Logan Lucky. So uh, we'll see if uh, his comedy films can continue here. All right, next one up comes from a uh, director who I, I run hot and cold with, but I'm this one sounds pretty good. Uh, it's uh, called Marriage Story. stars Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, Laura Dern, Ray Liotta, Alan Alda, and Julie Haggerty, uh, famous from uh, of airplane fame. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen her in a movie in a long time. Uh, it comes from writer-director Noah Bombach, who did uh, um, one of my favorite comedies of the decade in um, Mistress America, and then also did a very, I thought was really good, um, the... Uh, um, uh, the Netflix film, uh, the, um, shit, I just totally forgot it. Meyerowitz Stories, yeah. I enjoyed that one. I know some people didn't like it because, just because Dustin Hoffman was in it, but whatever. <laughs> Screw those people. Um, yeah, I also really, uh, I, I didn't have a good reaction, though, to another film he did around the same time, um, as Mistress America. I can't remember what that one was called now, but it was, uh, Ben Stiller, Naomi Watts, Adam Driver, and, uh, um, uh, Amanda, uh, Seyfried. Um... God, whichever one that one was. I remember it had really good critical reviews and stuff, but I was totally bored during the movie. Anyways, uh, but I mentioned that uh, there's a couple other kind of bigger names involved here. Rob Robbie Ryan, who was just nominated for his first Oscar last year for The Favorite, is uh, running the camera here. He's actually uh, Bonebach's usual cinematographer. And Randy Newman is doing the music, so that, that'll be interesting. So the story follows uh, Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson as a married couple who split up, I guess, early in the film. Uh, Driver is a stage director, and his actress wife is played by Johansson. They separate, and they live on opposite coasts. It's coming out through Netflix. Uh, no release date on uh, on that yet. Okay, the next one, 
uh, is Motherless Brooklyn. This might be a big gamble film, but it might it, it might turn out to be one of the best of the year, maybe. Uh, it stars Edward Norton, uh, Willem Dafoe, Bruce Willis, Gugu Mbathu-Ra, Alec Baldwin, Leslie Mann, Bobby Can- Cannavale, uh, and it's the uh, directorial debut of actor uh, Edward Norton, who also wrote the screenplay. And uh, we have uh, cinematographer Dick Poop, I mean Dick Pope, you get the joke, uh, who was recently nominated for Mr. Turner. He usually works with um, Mike Lee on his films. Um, and it's about a private investigator in 1950s New York with Tourette's Syndrome, uh, played by uh, Edward Norton, who's trying to solve the murder of his mentor. Uh, no trailer on this yet, but it is scheduled for release November 1st uh, from Warner Brothers. Yeah, yeah, that it sounds like an interesting story. They've got a good ensemble cast there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes those actor directorial debuts, they turn out pretty good. Other times they don't, you know. So we'll we'll have to see. Okay, the next one up is another one that not a lot of uh, information is out on it yet. But uh, it does have a couple of big stars in it. So I thought it would kind of sound uh, kind of cool. It's called Ordinary Love. Uh, it had an alternate title of Normal People. Uh, it stars Liam Neeson and Leslie Manville as a couple who are dealing with a uh, diagnosis of cancer, and it wasn't clear from the description if that's they both get cancer or just one of them. Um, no release date on it yet, but it is coming from Bleecker Street and Focus Features. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, neither. I mean, Les Manville was nominated a couple years ago for Phantom Thread, but uh, Neeson has not been nominated in a long time. And you know, even though he does get occasionally a few Oscar-friendly roles. Um, yeah, we'll see if... Man, maybe that might break his curse this year. Okay, and I scrolled way too far down. Okay, here's the next one. Uh, Pain and Glory. Uh, and this stars Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz. Uh, coming from director Pedro... Uh, let's see. Almodorov. Or uh, Almodovar. There we go. Uh, who has directed a few uh, films before, like The Skin I Live In, and uh, Oscar-winning film Talk to Her. And it's kind of... I guess kind of self-reflexive and kind of similar to Birdman where it's a, you know, director telling his own story in the film. And, uh, it does star, uh, Banderas as a, uh, an aging director trying to kind of grapple with an uncertain future on a film set. And, uh, uh, premiered at Cannes, uh, earlier this year, 92%, and, uh, is coming, uh, it was released, uh, already in Spain, but, uh, through, uh, Sony International, so I don't know if that means it's Sony Pictures Classics here in the state, or if it's just going to be just uh, the brand, general brand of Sony. But no release date as of yet on Pain and Glory. Okay, next one up is another biopic, Radioactive. Uh, this one stars Rosamund Pike and Anya Taylor-Joy. Uh, coming actually from producers Tim Bevan and El- uh, Eric Fellner. They're two of the producers on the film. They're usual customers when it comes to Oscar nominations. They saw Darkest Hour get nominated. Uh, Victoria and Abdul, I believe, also Theory of Everything, amongst a few other films. Or at least I, Bevan, I think, was at least a producer on um, uh, Theory of Everything. So usually these guys get uh, a film across for Best Picture. And it's a biopic of uh, Marie Curie. However, here's the thing. Right now it's it's uh, slated for a release date in the U.S., but in 2020. So it's uh, not, very, um, not very clear there if that's, like, very early 2020. Like, it'll still premiere and technically qualify for the Oscars this year. Or if they're planning it later in 2020 and they're going to go and wait another year for it. Um, either way, it's you know it's Marie Curie. I, I recently saw the uh, um, National Geographic uh, miniseries on Albert Einstein, and the uh, the Marie Curie stuff was actually some of the more interesting stuff in the whole series. I I really had an interesting reaction to that really quick. If I can divert for a second here, the the miniseries I thought the first episode was really distracting. They really bounced back and forth between old Albert Einstein and young Albert Einstein, and I kept, it was kind of, I mean, not difficult to follow as far as, like, because I know young versus old, but it was just like, you'd start to really get involved with the young Albert Einstein, and then they'd cut to the future stuff, and it's like, oh, come on, bullshit, I was getting interested, and, you know, and, and I was getting into the story, and then you, you know, turned away like that, and then the old Einstein would do something, and it's like, eh, it's not as interesting, go back to the young stuff, and then eventually it did get interesting, and then right then they cut back, and it's just did that forever and i was just like oh this this sucks but then episode two on really got very good i you know even though it was sappy in a few parts and stuff and it you know uh coming from ron howard that's maybe to be expected um yeah it was still you know uh, i thought a pretty good series um anyways uh so that's my bit on that but also (sighs) rosman pike i would have really i mean i would like to have seen her get nominated last year for uh 
uh, Private War, uh, which was pretty good. Um, and her performance, of course, was, was a standout quality of that film. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Last year's Best Actress race got pretty tough. Okay. Uh, so next up, uh, another kind of interesting one. Uh, it's called The Friend. It stars Jason Siegel, Dakota Johnson and Casey Affleck, and Gwendolyn Christie. And it's about, again, kind of a semi-autograph uh, uh, biographical tale from the person who really lived it. And it's uh, about a guy who moves in with his friends when um, one of them is diagnosed with terminal cancer. And the woman who's diagnosed with terminal cancer is played by Dakota Johnson in the film and Siegel's The, the Friend. So, um, yeah, a lot of, like, cancer and terminal illness stuff this year at can- uh, at uh, TIFF, excuse me. Um, no release date on this one yet, no trailer that I've seen. Um, it's coming from Black... Black Bear is one of the production studios on it, but I don't know if they're going to distribute. They were the only one... one of the only ones listed there, so we'll see. Okay, next up is one of the kind of bigger studio heavy hitters, but, again, might be a film that's just premiering at TIFF just because it opens right away. And that's The Goldfinch. Uh, it stars Nicole Kidman, Ansel Elgore, Luke Wilson, Paul, uh, Sarah Paulson, Jeffrey Wright, and Finn Wolfhard, coming from director John Crowley, who was, uh, uh, recently got Brooklyn, one of his uh, last films nominated for Best Picture, and that was, that was a pretty good film. Uh, it's about a, and it's based off of a very popular book, um, The Goldfinch is. And it's about a boy who, uh, at a young age, survives a bombing in an art museum and later on in life, moves to Las Vegas and starts to deal in forged and stolen art. Uh, the trailer was out for this uh, a couple months ago. Uh, it, it was really, I mean, it, I mean, it looked nice. Um, I can't remember who the cinematographer on it was, but um, yeah, I mean, it looked fine and everything, but it just, the story, I mean, I just really couldn't tell what the story was based off the trailer. I uh, haven't seen it since, haven't seen it play in movie theaters yet or anything, but uh, I don't know. It's, it is coming from Warner Brothers. It's slated for September 13th, which is going to be close to the time that uh that tiff opens i think it was set um i looked up the dates earlier here but uh i'm gonna just check it one more time just so i can get this right no um september 5th through the 15th so yeah it would be basically it would open up i mean right before the film premieres which again is never uh never a 100 percent guarantee that it's not any good but it's it's usually not a good good sign okay uh, the next film up is The Laundromat. This is Steven Soder- Soderbergh's latest film. Another big ensemble cast in this one. Meryl Streep, Gary Oldman, Antonio Banderas, David Schwimmer, Will Forte, uh, Matthias Schoenartz, Jeffrey Wright, James Cromwell, Melissa Rauch, and Robert Patrick. Um, and uh, as, well, usually lately, uh, Soderbergh is also going to be the editor and the cinematographer on this, and his usual writer, Scott Z. Burns, is going to be writing the script. Uh, and it's, uh, about the, uh, financial crime drama about, it's a financial crime drama, I should say, about the, uh, Panama Papers leak, uh, basically where some political figures used some secret bank accounts to avoid paying taxes. Uh, it is set for release from Netflix. Uh, they haven't announced when, but it's coming from Netflix. Um, and of course you'd never bid against, uh, 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 I forgot his name, Soderbergh. God damn it. Um, you never really bet against Soderbergh unless it's something that's way outside his wheelhouse. Like, uh, you know, Logan Lucky, as much as, you know, I enjoyed the film, that wasn't really an obvious Oscar play from the start. But this one sounds more like, you know, something like Traffic, you know, or maybe not like subject matter wise, but it sounds like, you know, it's probably going to have a pr- pretty primed release date there. Of course, another Netflix film we haven't mentioned yet that is not going to be at the festival running festival circuit is uh, The Irishman. Of course, we've all been w- heavily anticipating that. Uh, we'll see if they can get that one out in, say, a November or December release date. So if they can plan it right, so something like this, like the Laundromat, can maybe be an October release or something. Um, you know, maybe they can get in this year if it is really good. And, of course, you never get a, never bet against Meryl Streep getting nominated. So she, I don't know if she would go lead or supporting for this. Uh, we'll have to see how big her, her role is. But, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one up is The Lighthouse. This comes from the witch director, Robert Eggers. And stars Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe, and they're basically more or less the only two people in the movie. And it's about two lighthouse keepers on an isolated New England island, uh, basically going insane and going mad in the early 1800s. Uh, this is another can release, uh, 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I think the average score out of 10 was like a 9.14. Damn, I mean, that's that's usually a pretty good sign. Uh, it's coming from that tricky Studio A24 <laughs> Uh, who's given us some uh, grief in the past for getting some surprise nominations and wins. Um, 
but uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what they do with this one. If it's going to be a big awards player, or if it's just going to be kind of a you know late in the year release, just around Halloween or something, uh, we'll see. But uh, you know, you do have you know uh, a recent two time nominee with Willem Dafoe, uh, nominated for um, um, uh, the one he did, the uh, Sean Baker one, um, Florida Project really good i frankly i could have seen him winning that i would have, i would not have been uh let down if he had won that and then of course nominated last year for the uh uh vincent van gogh movie uh so yeah i would you know with a, a kind of you know hot streak actor like that and robert pattinson of course just announced a few months ago as batman we'll see how that i i know a lot of people were excited about it but i haven't seen a lot of pattinson's work post twilight uh, i know he did like good time and a couple other films like that but um, yeah, I might I might be curious to see this one. I, I enjoyed The Witch when it came out. Um, wasn't like it wasn't like a big big memorable horror film to me. I thought it was you know other than Black Phillip uh, and the launching of Annie Taylor Joy's career, wasn't really like a stick in the memory that hard film. I mean obviously the, yeah the Black Phillip stuff. I mean that was great. But uh, yeah yeah we'll see how he he does with this one. Okay, uh, next up is uh, the personal history of David Copperfield. Uh, this stars Dev Patel. Tilda Swinton, Hugh Laurie, Gwendolyn Christie, Peter Capaldi, Ben Wishaw, and Benedict Wong. So almost everybody in it is is British. Um, it's an adaptation, basically, of, of David Copperfield, as told through Charles Dickens' uh, classic book. Uh, again, not a ton more to say about this one. No release date on it as of yet, and uh, it's coming from Film 4. Uh, that's one of the production companies. Again, I'm not sure if they're going to distribute as well, but uh, they're involved. Okay, we're almost done here. We've got uh, four films left. Uh, next one up is another big kind of heavy hitter uh, from earlier this year that made a big impact, and we'll see if it can continue to do so. The Report. Uh, this one also stars Adam Driver and also stars Annette Bening. Um, John Hamm is also in this one. Tim Blake Nelson, Ben McKenzie, Matthew Reese, Ted Levine, Maura Tierney, and Corey Stahl. Uh, we mentioned Scott Z. Burns a little earlier for writing The Laundromat. He is the writer and director on this one. Um and some, I can't remember if this is his directorial debut or if he's done some directorial stuff in the past. Uh, I, I, he probably has, but I'm just not remembering right now. And it's basically a tale of a uh, Senate staffer played by a driver who looks into the CIA's enhanced interrogation techniques back uh, about 15, 20 years ago now uh, with the uh, war on terror and, uh, and then tries to release the investigation to the public but is roadblocked by both the, uh, the Bush administration and the CIA. As you mentioned, this was a big hit at Sundance, uh, 94%. Uh, most of the reviews were very, very good on this. Amazon is behind it, uh, coming out on September 27th. And I thought I read a report earlier this year where they said um, they're planning on releasing it in limited theaters on the 27th and then kind of moderating it through theatrical release. If it really takes off, they'll probably keep it in theaters longer. But they plan to release it on, on Amazon's uh, streaming service later on in October. Uh, so we'll see how uh, that one goes for him. Okay, the next one up sounds like a fun film. It's called The Two Popes. It stars uh, Jonathan Price and Anthony Hopkins uh, from director Fernando Mireles, uh, director of City of God and The Constant Gardener. And it's, uh, I guess, kind of... I, it kind of sounds a little similar to last year's Best Picture winner, Green Book, where it's about Popes Francis and Benedict kind of debating what's best for the Catholic Church. You have um, Francis, who's kind of more of a progressive... And Benedict, who's more of a conservative, so of course it's uh, they say it's it's got some comedic beats to it. At least in the description, they kind of described it as a kind of comedy film. Uh, it is coming through Netflix again, so I can see this. I can see this being like an August or a or well, maybe not August, but probably September or October release date. Um, but they have not solidified that as of yet. Okay, like I said, almost there. Two more. Uh, next one up is True History of the Kelly Gang. Uh, this stars Russell Crowe. Nicholas Holt, Thomas McKenzie, and Charlie Hunnam. Uh, I believe almost all of them are Australian actors. Um, and it's uh, based on real-life outlaw Ned Kelly and his gang in Australia. I um, don't know too much more beyond that. Uh, but I guess he was like a Hellraiser kind of outlaw back in the uh, 1800s. Uh, no release date or big known distributor on this one yet, so we might hear about news like that. And and this, that goes for a lot of the films on the TIFF schedule. If they don't have a big distributor yet or a release date, some of them will get picked up uh, through the festival there. Okay, the last one arguably sounds like one of the most interesting and kind of offbeat films, and that's Uncut Gems, starring Adam Sandler. Uh, also stars Lakeith Stanfield, uh, uh, Adele Dazeem, excuse me, Adina Menzel, <laughs> yeah, you get the joke, Adina Menzel, 
Judd Hirsch uh, and Pom Clementiev. I still have, uh, uh, even though she's done how many Marvel movies now, I still don't know her name. Uh, Scott Rudin is a producer on the film, and it's about a jeweler played by Sandler who uh, lives in the Diamond District in New York, and he kind of gets in over his head and tries to balance professional and per- personal life and also try to, you know, make, make uh, some big deals there and stuff. Um, and it, they described it as a thriller. So it is Sandler going more serious. Um, so, I mean, uh, uh, Meyerowitz stories more or less was a dramedy. Um, Rain Over Me, uh, was one of Sandler's more dramatic attempts in, in the, uh, recent past year. So he can do it. Uh, and, you know, arguably, uh, uh, punk, dr- punch drunk love was also kind of more of a romantic, drama than a even though there were some very funny parts of that movie <laughs> shut 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 up i always love that but um yeah we oh and we we do always miss uh, philip seymour hoffman as well but anyways um yeah it's it's set for release on uh, december 13th from a24 netflix is going to pick up the international release so we could potentially see this go you know release through a24 and then go to netflix uh not way too long afterwards um and and probably probably see it leaked too the same thing happened with uh, Annihilation. Uh, what was that? Twenty eighteen. So yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's the the rundown of TIFF. Uh, like I said, the festival runs uh, pulled up again. I think it was uh, the fifth through the fifteenth. Um, we'll probably touch up on these again once we get the full schedule out. Um, as far as what's the opening film, what's closing film, what premieres these dates, these dates, these dates. We'll probably get into that a little bit uh, further on in the year. Um, and of course, if there's any changes to the to the announcement here, like if something pulls out or, uh, well, which doesn't usually happen. Usually, if you're announced at this point, you're there. Uh, there might be some last minute inclusions that does happen occasionally. Again, not very often, but every once in a while, it's like a surprise kind of screening comes up. Um, yeah, so we'll you know we'll keep an eye on it. And like I said, Venice uh, Film Festival uh, announcements uh, should be coming out later this week. So. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got for now. We will, uh, see you guys when the, uh, Venice announcements are made.